All right, so now we've moved on to time of flight. And what we mean by time of flight is literally how long it takes this object to go up and come back down again. So if you're thinking about the time it takes it to go up and come back down again, well, that time is going to finish when it lands. That means that when it lands, that's when your vertical displacement is at zero again. Because it's starting off at zero, going up, coming back down. So that means what we need to do is just use our vertical displacement equation, a vertical motion equation here, and make it equal to zero. Yeah, quite simple and it makes sense. From here, we can factorize out the t. And once we factorize out the t, it's kind of like, you know, in a quadratic equation where you say that equals zero or the other thing equals to zero. So in this case, either that t there equals to zero or this big bracket equals to zero. So or gt on two minus v sine theta equals to zero. And then moving that to the other side, gt on two, we can say that equals to v sine theta. Yeah, so either t equals to zero or this equals to v sine theta. And from here, we can work out what t equals to as well. So multiply the two over, so that becomes 2v sine theta and divide by the g, okay? So t, therefore, equals to 2v sine theta on g. So that's what our time of flight is represented by. And then you ask, well, why isn't it that t equals to zero? Well, this t equals to zero here represents our initial starting value, where that object is starting off from, whereas this represents where it's ending. So that's why this here represents the time of flight. Once again, I don't want you to memorize this equation, so it's not that point. The point of this is you know how to work it out. And what we have up here, so that will probably be the first part of a question for you to work out the vertical motion here, and then you would ask for the time of flight. So don't worry too much that you may need to memorize that there. You don't need to. What I wanna teach you is how to work this out. And the best way to teach you that is by actually going through a question. That's exactly what we're gonna do. So question 10 here, angle 60 degrees, our velocity is 100, and we wanna find the time of flight of this object using gravity equals to 10 meters per second squared. So using our vertical motion, so vertical displacement equals to this, which we would have worked out in a previous question, and substituting in the various values, so g equals to 10, v is 100, and theta in this case is 60 degrees. The 10 and the two cancel, that's why we have negative 5t squared there. And sine 60 degrees, we know that's square root three on two. So that's why when it's multiplied by 100, that cancels to give us 50 square root three t here. And now remember, the point of this time of flight is that it ends back here when y equals zero. So we make this whole thing equal to zero. And that's how we get this equation here because we want to work out when y equals to zero again. And now remember, we could factorize out the t, but don't just factorize out the t. Always have a look what else you can factorize out because it just makes our lives easier. And you can see in this case that you can also factorize out five. So we factorize out negative five t and that here will leave us with just t. And here, this will become negative 10 square root three. So from here, we can see that either this equals to zero or that equals to zero. So we can say t equals to zero or t equals to 10 square root three. Now, remember how I said, since this represents the initial starting value, that means this must represent that last value. So this must be the time of flight. So our time of flight in this case is 10 square root three seconds. So just remember, you're gonna always get two values for this, but the first value will be where it's starting off, the second value where it's ending, so that represents the time of flight. 